Hello students, a very good afternoon to all. So today we are going to discuss plant growth and development. The so first thing that we are going to discuss is growth. So in plant, the growth is irreversible and permanent increase in size of an organ, its parts and even the individual cell. So in plant, the growth is irreversible. Remember this. It's irreversible and it's permanent. And in living organism, the growth is intrinsic. Intrinsic means that it is taking place inside the body. Whereas in non-living organism, so in non-living, the growth is extrinsic. Remember this, in living it is intrinsic, in non-living it is extrinsic. And growth is unlimited in case of plant, that is indefinite. Plant, they show continuous growth throughout their life. And why they show that? Because they have presence of meristem. And meristem, they continuously divide and produce cells. These are the cells which are continuously dividing. That is why the growth in plant is unlimited or is indefinite and we also call it as open growth. Because this meristem, they are continuously dividing, they are continuously producing cells and these cells, they are being added to the plant body. We also know that in plant, the growth is localized because meristem they are present, they are apical meristem, which are present at the apex, like root apical meristem or shoot apical meristem. They are intercalary meristem. These meristems are present between the permanent tissue. For example, this is a shoot, this is a shoot apical meristem. And here the intercalary meristem is present. This is the permanent tissue and this is a permanent tissue. So the meristem which is present between the permanent tissue is known as an intercalary meristem. And then secondary meristem are also there or lateral meristem, which we are going to discuss later. So growth in plant is localized because these apical meristem, they have a position. Like the apical meristem will present at the tip, intercalary meristem will be present in between and lateral meristem will be present here and laterally. Next one is that how we can measure growth. So there are certain parameters through which we can measure the growth. It could be increase in fresh weight, increase in dry weight, increase in length, area, volume and cell number. So first example says, that root apical meristem in case of maize give rise to more than 17,500 new cells per hour. That means here the growth parameter is the number of cells which are producing in per hour. So here the parameter of growth is different. Similarly, in watermelon, the increase in cell size is used as a parameter. That is increase in size. Growth in pollen tube is measured in terms of length. Growth in leaf is measured in terms of its surface area. Okay, so there are different parameters to measure the growth. Next one is growth is divided into three phases. Number one is the formative phase. Number two is the enlargement phase. Formative phase, we also call it as meristematic phase. Enlargement phase, we also call it as elongation phase. 
and the third one is the maturation phase so in meristematic phase the cell is continuously dividing and these cells they have a large conspicuous nucleus conspicuous means that the nucleus is easily observed you can easily observe the nucleus it is very large and these cells they have primary cell wall and we know that primary cell wall is elastic in nature it is thin because these cells are newly formed and newly formed cells are young cells and young cells they have primary cell wall and these cells they have abundant cytoplasmal they have abundant plasmodesmetal connection plasmodesmetal connection are the cytoplasmic bridge okay there is a one cell and the second cell and they have the cytoplasmic bridges which connect the cytoplasm of the one cell with the second cell so these bridges are known as plasmodesmata next one is the elongation phase in elongation phase increased vacuolation is observed increased vacuolation that you we know that the plant cell they have a vacuole right so vacuole increase in size that is increased vacuolation cell enlargement takes place cell will increase in size and new cell wall deposition occur in this phase the secondary walls start forming and we know that secondary walls are formed inner to the primary cell wall first primary cell wall will be red will be formed and then which is formed in the young stage and in the, in the elongation phase the secondary cell wall are formed and secondary cell wall are always formed inner to the primary cell wall next come is the maturation phase where the cell attain the maximum size in terms of the wall thickening and protoplasmic modification which takes place in maturation phase now the cell is completely mature moving next is the growth rate so growth rate is growth with respect to time and growth rate is a due to time one is arithmetic growth rate and the second one is geometric arithmetic when the growth is constant for example in this case this is the meristematic cell and when this cell divide two daughter cells will formed one this one this one daughter cell remain meristematic in nature that means it has the capability to divide but the other cell become differentiated undergo specialization if i say differentiated it means that this cell has acquire a particular function okay the cell has undergo specification or specialization and acquired a particular function and has lost the ability to divide please remember this differentiated cells are those which has acquired a specific function plus lost the ability to divide and become mature or permanent because when they lost the ability to divide and acquire the specific function these are known as a permanent cell so here one cell is differentiated similarly when this cell divide two daughter cell will formed right one remain as meristematic and the other one will get differentiated so here two are formed similarly this cell when divide again two daughter cells are formed one get differentiated one remain meristematic and these are from the previous division so at this case three are formed so you can see the difference is one here it is also the one so the growth is constant throughout the life the growth is constant this is what we call as arithmetic growth moving next is the geometric growth geometric growth when the growth is not constant or it's variable this we observe in early embryo development so this is a cell parent cell it divide it form two daughter cell now this cell will all both the cell daughter cell will undergo division it produce two and two so here two daughter cells are formed here four are formed now all the daughter cell will undergo division and they form two here also two are forming here also two are forming and two here One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight are forming. So here the difference is two. Here the difference is four. Right? 
so difference is not constant so growth is variable in case of geometric growth and we observe that in early embryo development this is a zygote when the male and female gamete fuse they form zygote zygote undergo mitotic division several mitotic division to form embryo so i'm here writing early embryo because the early embryo development shows geometric growth later it shows arithmetic growth so when the zygote divide four cells are forming first divide two are forming these two will undergo four are forming and then they will undergo division then eight will form so this development is geometric because all the cells are dividing there is no differentiation but after some point this is the early development in late now the one cell will undergo when one cell divide the one will become differentiated and other remain meristematic same as arithmetic okay moving next is differentiation de differentiation and re differentiation okay so when we know that plant have meristem right so this is a primary meristem like apical meristem intercalary meristem these are primary meristem when these primary meristem undergo division and produce a lot of cell first occurs differentiation the cell produced by this meristem they acquire a particular function and undergo specialization and loss the ability to divide we call this cell as differentiated cell or the primary permanent cell so this process is known as differentiation when the cell lost the ability to divide acquire a particular function and become permanent now this sometimes what happen these permanent cells primary permanent cell they regain the ability to divide earlier they have lost the ability to divide and they become permanent but in some cases they regain the ability to divide again and they become secondary meristem in plants the secondary meristem is interfascicular cambium remember this interfascicular cambium plus there is cock cambium remember in dicot these are vascular bundles i'm not drawing the complete diagram here in between the medullary rays are present the cells of the medullary rays they undergo de differentiation and form the secondary meristem or the interfascicular cambium similarly the cells of cortex in dicot they undergo de differentiation and they form cock cambium which is also secondary meristem so this permanent tissue undergo de differentiation in differentiation the cell has acquired a particular function okay cell has acquired a particular function lost the ability to divide in case of differentiation but when this perm when this permanent cell or the differentiated cell acquire again regain the ability to divide that means that cell has undergo de differentiation so we call it as de differentiation now the secondary meristem it will produce some cells it will divide and produce some cells and these cells we call it as secondary permanent cell so in short in short i'm writing pcs permanent cell okay so secondary permanent cell will form now this cell again is name suggest as re differentiation that means differentiation is taking place again now again the cell which is produced by secondary meristem again will undergo specialization acquire a particular function okay and again lost the ability to divide now this cell has become permanent because it has lost the ability to divide and acquire a particular function and we know that all the products which are formed by the secondary meristem like second interfascicular cambium will form secondary xylem secondary phloem okay cock cambium will form phallum that is cock on the outer side and phallodem which is secondary cortex on the inner side so all the products or the cells which are produced by this secondary meristem they all are example of re differentiation remember this if the question says like secondary xylem or secondary phloem 
they are the example of which different which process and the option would be like de-differentiation differentiation and re-differentiation beta please remember that secondary xylem and secondary phloem they are the product of the process re-differentiation okay i hope it is clear moving next is development development is all the changes that are taking place in the life cycle of an organism all the changes and it is development includes both growth and differentiation it is the sum of the growth and differentiation and it is under the control of intrinsic factor and the extrinsic factor if i say intrinsic factor these are genetic factor it could be a pgr which is a plant growth regulator it could be an intracellular factor or intercellular factor all these factor they regulate development extrinsic factor the factor which are external in nature like environment factor which are associated with environment light temperature nutrition oxygen and many more and one more thing that plant they follow a different pathway to form the different structure plant structure with in response to the environment or the life cycle of organism for example this we got what we call the hope is is known as plasticity and the example of plasticity is heterophyly hetero means different and phyly means leaf so in this case you can observe the different leaf structure in the juvenile stage which is the early stage of development in the early stage of development the structure of leaf is very small but in adult the structure of leaf is large you can see the difference in size this is small in juvenile stage and in adult stage it is larger in size and it's the same species that is lexpo same species ki leaf li hai juvenile stage mein small in size hai adult mein large in size hai we call it as developmental heterophyly why developmental because juvenile and the adult they are the developmental stages and heterophyly because we are observing the different structure at the different developmental stage second one is buttercup so there's the same species of buttercup but showing different leaf structure terrestrial habitat if the buttercup is in the terrestrial habitat in this case the structure of leaf is like this if it is having an aquatic habitat then the structure of leaf is different so here the environment is play, uh, playing a important role you can observe the different structure of leaf in terrestrial and in aquatic so we call it as environmental heterophyly okay that is why i was saying that the plant they follow different pathway to form different plant structure in response to the environment and the life cycle that the development stages in the organism moving next is the plant growth regulator very important pgr okay and plant growth regulator they have two type they are plant growth promoter and inhibitor promoter which promote the growth of the plant inhibitor which inhibit the activity such as dormancy and abscission so plant growth inhibitor majorly is aba and we also call aba as stress hormone okay and one more thing the plant growth promoter are auxin cytokinin the gibberellic acid and ethylene also ethylene act both as plant growth promoter and growth inhibitor but majorly as inhibitor please remember majorly as inhibitor and please beta remember the derivatives of the hormones very important 
Oxen has indole com. They are indole compound. Indole three acetic acid IAA. Chitin. That cytokinin is the adenine derivative. ABA, abscisic acid, is a carotenoid derivative. Gibberellic acid, terpene derivative. And ethylene is a gaseous hormone. Remember this, the only hormone which is gaseous is ethylene. Moving next is the discovery of the plant growth regulator. First, we are going to discuss auxin. First is the discovery which is done by Darwin, Charles Darwin and his son Francis Darwin. They observed the phototropism. Photo means light and tropism is the growth movement. When the growth is taking place towards light, then it is phototropism. For example, here, this is the tip. We call it as colliptile, which is a shoot tip. When the unidirectional light fall on the colliptile, the bending or the curvature is obtained. Okay. This is uh, why? Because the growth promoting substance, some growth promoting substance are synthesized here in the colliptile when the light fall and this growth promoting substance start moving towards the dark side. Remember this, this is a dark side and this is a light side because the light is falling. It gets transported and accumulated in the dark side. And when the growth, pro growth promoting substance accumulate in the dark side, this side, this side will undergo elongation, enlargement, division will take place. So this side will show more growth as compared to this side. So bending is taking place towards the light. But when we remove this tip, colliptile tip, no curvature is observed. That means no bending. Because the growth promoting substance is synthesizing only in the tip. Similarly, when the opaque cap is placed on the tip, no curvature is obtained because the growth promoting substance is not synthesized because the tip has been removed. Now, second experiment, this was done by W. F. F. W. Went. He is the scientist who first observed auxin and he is the scientist who first isolated auxin. Remember this, auxin was first isolated by F. Went from the tip of colliptal of oat seedling. Scientific name of oat is Evena. Remember this. So when the light fall on this colliptile tip of Evena, Oxen are synthesized. After the synthesis of oxen, what he did, he removed the colliptile tip and placed it on the agar block. So all the oxen which are present in the tip, they start diffusing in this agar block. And when he placed this agar block on the decapitated stem, he observed that all the oxen which are present in this agar block start diffusing towards the darker side. They start diffusing into the decapitated stem and they get accumulated on the darker side and then bending take place. So oxen was first isolated by WF went. This is how the oxen discovery occur. These two experiments are very important. Moving next is the gibberellic acid. So, Bacana is a disease which was first observed in the rice seedling. In Japan. And it was found that it, this Rice seedling was infected by a fungal pathogen which was Gibrella fusicori. Remember the name of the pathogen and the name of the disease. And what the symptoms? They show that the plant are very tall. They have weak stem. So E. Korosawa was the scientist. What he did? He take the sterile filtrates of the fungus of this 
gibberella physica ry and exposed it the healthy plant exposed this sterile feed rate of the fungus to the healthy plant and he observed that the healthy plant start showing this symptoms which are the symptoms of the disease so later it was found that the active substance was gibberellic acid and there are different types of gibberellic acid there are ga1 ga3 ga4 but the most important is ga3 it was the first gibberellic acid to be discovered or identified is ga3 remember this moving next is cytokinin cytokinin discovery was done by scoob and his co-workers they find out that they worked on tobacco so when they take the calyx from the tobacco they observe that the calyx undergo differentiation or proliferation only if there is oxygen in the medium plus some supplements and these supplements are extract of vascular tissue yeast extract coconut milk or dna and all these substances supplements they promote cytokinesis okay so later they identify and crystallize the cytokinesis promoting active substance and they named it as kinetin so kinetin was first isolated from the dna of the herring sperm remember this but the first natural cytokinin is zeatin remember the the first natural natural cytokinin is zeatin and it is obtained from maize plant and one more point beta for the calyx differentiation or proliferation in tissue culture we require two hormones one is oxygen and the other one is cytokinin remember this is very important the question came in neat the two hormones which play a very important role in the differentiation or proliferation of the calyx that is the formation of the radical and the pimule in tissue culture is oxygen and cytokinin moving next is the discovery of aba and ethylene so three independent researchers they work independently and report the purification and characterization of a three different inhibitor number one is the inhibitor b abscisin 2 and dormin and all three they have the same chemical nature they are chemically identical and later they were named as aba which is a abscisic acid and aba is a stress hormone remember this and ethylene is a gaseous hormone first discovered by cousin what he observed he observed that there are ripened oranges and from that ripened orange the volatile compound is coming out and this volatile compound causing the ripening of the unripe banana okay so later he found that this volatile compound is ethylene which are promoting the ripening of the unripe fruit moving next are the functions of plant growth regulator number 1 is oxygen these functions are very important sometimes the uh, direct question came from uh, these uh, function came from the function of the plant growth regulator please remember all the function of every phyto hormone first isolated from human urine produced in the tip of shoot and root that is shoot apical meristem and the root apical meristem tip natural oxygen is i i i a a which is indole three acetic acid and indole butyric acid so these two are the natural oxygen and the synthetic oxygen as n a a which is naphthalene acetic acid and 2,4 d dichloro phenoxy acetic remember the name of the natural oxygen and synthetic oxygen these are also very important they promote rooting in the stem cutting important promote flowering in pineapple remember this i'm going to tell the another other name another hormone which also play a very important role in pineapple so oxygen is the one which promote flowering in pineapple 
it promote absorption of the older mature leaf and fruit remember this point beta auxin prevent the absorption of the early leaf and fruit but promote the absorption of older mature leaf and fruit older ka to wo promote kar raha hai but early ka wo absorb jo early leaves and fruit hai unke absorption ko prevent karta hai remember this point apical dominance very important feature of auxin remember like this a for auxin and a for apical dominance this is an apical bud okay when the apical bud is there it prevent the growth of the lateral bud okay but if we remove this apical bud that mean the auxin is removed from the tip now the lateral bud will start growing this is what apical dominance is and we generally observe this in tea because we pluck the tea leaves from the tip so that the lateral uh, bud can grow auxin also induce parthenocarpy in tomato remember this and it's also used as herbicide one is 24 24d which is widely used to kill dicot dicotyledonous plant bit a very important remember this the herbicide which is used it kill the dicotyledonous plant but does not affect the mature monocotyledonous plant okay remember this auxin also controls xylem differentiation important remember this all these functions are very important you have to learn it next one is gibberellin as i told you that there are different types of gibberellin there is ga ga1 ga2 and ga3 but the important one is ga3 because it was the one of the first gibberellin to be discovered important feature they increase the length of the grape stalk you can see this one is ga treated and the second one is a control or not treated with ga if we increase the length of the stalk i am this is a stalk if i keep increasing the length then the grapes will get large larger space to grow similarly in this case you can see the size of the grape is larger because they get more space to grow but in this case the size of the grape is smaller they are small in size because the stalk is short and they didn't get the enough space to grow next one is gibberellin cause fruit like apple to elongate and improve it shape they also delay senescence remember this gibberellin delay senescence ga3 is used to speed up the malting process in brewing industry remember this and most important many times the question came in need that which hormone is sprayed on the sugar cane to increase the yield that is gibberellin so sugar cane crops they are sprayed with gibberellic acid to increase the length of the stem this is a sugar cane and the important part of the sugar cane is the stem because the sugar are stored in these stem so gibberellin they increase the size of the stem or the internodal elongation in the stem because of which increase which, which will result in the increased yield which is more than as much as 20 tons per acre next one is spraying juvenile conifer with ga they fasten the maturity period so that because of which the early seed production can takes place gibberellin also promotes bolting bolting is the internode elongation just prior to flowering in case of these rosettes just prior to flowering internodal elongation will takes place and the flower will be above you can see the flower above moving next is cytokinin cytokinin main function is to promote nutrient mobilization because of which it delay the leaf senescence वो न्यूट्रिएंट मोबिलाइजेशन को इंक्रीज कर देता है प्लांट में सो so, हर लीज के पास बहुत सारे न्यूट्रिएंट ऐसे प्लांट में 
ट्रांसपोर्ट होता रहेगा उसको प्रमोट करेगा मोबिलाइजेशन ऑफ न्यूट्रिय प्रमोट करेगा जिसकी वजह से सेनेसेंस ऑफ लीव क्या होगा डिले हो जाएगा नेचुरल साइटोकाने सिंथेसाइज इन रीजन वेयर देर इज अ रैपिड डिविजन इज टेकिंग प्लेस एट रूट एपेक्स डेवलपिंग ऑफ शूट बर्ड्स एंड यंग फ्रूट इट हेल्प टू प्रोड्यूस न्यू लीव एंड द क्लोरोप्लास्ट इन लीव एंड लेटरल शूट ग्रोथ एंड along with that also help in producing the adventitious shoot formation cytokine in also help to overcome the apical dominance and auxin promote apical dominance and cytokine in help to overcome this apical dominance remember this next one is ethylene ethylene is a gaseous hormone remember this the ethylene they showed triple response in plant plant will show triple response one is the horizontal growth of seedling swelling of the axis and apical hook formation in dicot seedling remember this it promotes senescence cytokine and gibberellin they delay senescence but ethylene promotes senescence and abscission of the plant organ highly effective in fruit ripening we have already discussed that fruit that ethylene play a very important role in fruit ripening because it increase the rate of respiration and because of which the flower the ripening of fruit become fast and we are all and those fruits are known as climactic fruit ethylene breaks the seed and bud dormancy and initiate germination in peanut seed and sprouting of potato tubers ethylene promote internode and petiole elongation remember this in rice plants so that the part of the shoot they remain above water ethylene initiate flowering for synchronizing fruit set in pineapple remember the auxin also promote flowering in pineapple similarly the ethylene initiate flowering for synchronizing fruit set in pineapple so two hormone auxin and ethylene they play they initiate flowering in pineapple and also ethylene also induce flowering in mango ethanone is the ethylene which fasten the fruit ripening in tomato apple and accelerate abscission in flower and fruit and ethylene promote female flowers remember this beta it's important it promote female flower in cucumber thereby increase the yield remember all these function they are given in ncert and these are very important abscisic acid aba is a stress hormone it regulate abscission and promote dormancy so that the seed can withstand or can uh, tolerate the adverse condition of the environment aba stimulate closure of stomata very important that aba stimulates closure of stomata in night when the co2 concentration when the co2 concentration increases in that case the aba in the cell will active this aba will stop the h plus ion influx and promote efflux of a k plus sorry k plus ion so promote efflux of the k plus ions okay let me draw this tomato uh, ab hormone okay now k plus will move out of the cell and h plus will move in now the malic acid present in this in the cell the h plus will bind and they form the malic so the solute concentration in the guard cell will decrease water potential will increase okay when solute decrease the water potential will increase and the water will always move from high concentration to low concentration so the water will move out exosmosis will takes place and when all exosmosis takes place then the it will lead to the closure of the stomata aba is a stress hormone this i have told you many times ab play a very important role in seed development maturation and dormancy okay 
Moving next is photo periodism. Very important. So, beta, plants ko kaise pata ki ab usse vegetative growth karni hai, ya fir flowering karni hai. Plant major karte hai proportion of the dark period and the light period. Okay. And on the basis of that, there are three types of plant. Short day plant, long day plant and day neutral plant. So there is a critical period. This is a critical. So when the light period is less than the critical period, then the flowering is induced. Those plant are known as short day plant. For example, tobacco. Remember the short and day mein to light hoti hai. When there is a short light, light is short, man, ki less than the critical period. Those plant are known as short day plant. Okay? And when the light is more than the critical, light period is more than the critical period, then the flowering is induced in those plants which are long day plant. Okay? And when there is no correlation between the exposure to light duration and induction of flower, there is no correlation between the exposure to light duration and the induction of flower. Those plants are known as day neutral plants like tomato. An example of long day plant is spinach, radish. These are long day plant. And one more important point, very, very important point. The site of perception of this light and the dark duration are leaves. They are not shoot apex. They are the leaves which are perceiving the light and the dark duration. Okay. For example, this is a stem, it's a leaf. So when there's a suitable induct light fall on the leaf or there's an inductive light and dark period duration, in that case, this hormone is synthesized, which is known as florigen. This hormone will transfer from the leaf to the shoot apex. And this hormone is responsible for inducing flowering. Okay. Moving next is vernalization. When the plant are exposed to a low temperature to induce flowering. This is known as vernalization. And there are two types of variety. There's a spring variety and there's winter variety. And main function of fertilization is to prevent the early reproductive development so that the plant can get more time for maturity. Okay. So the winter variety, if planted in spring, if it is planted in spring, normally fail to flower or produce mature grain within the span of a flowering season. Okay. This is a winter variety. If this variety is if sowing is done in spring, that is Feb or March, then there is no flowering. If this winter variety is sowing in autumn, autumn like October, November, now the growth, we observe growth in December or in, sorry, winter, after autumn winter came. Winter is December and January. Next is growth. Again, we'll observe the growth in spring. That is Feb and March. After this, we observe flowering in midsummer. So you can see the winter variety is given a 
exposure to low temperature that is winter so we are obtaining the flowering but in this case if this winter variety is sowing in spring that means there will be no winter so no flowering will be obtained because the plant are not exposed to the low temperature another example is the biennial plant and the example of biennials are sugar beet cabbage and carrot and biennial plants are those which complete their life cycle in 2 years first year they show vegetative growth and in second year they show flowering next is the question question number 1 says which of the following growth regulator is an adenine derivative option 1 is auxin option 2 is cytokinin option 3 is ethylene option 4 is abscisic acid quickly answer everybody i told you please remember all the derivative of the hormones the adenine derivatives carotenoid derivative terpene derivative indole derivative remember all the derivatives of the hormone what do you think what will be the correct option for this question which of the following growth regulator is an adenine derivative quickly answer in the chat box dhruvi mohina This is cytokinin. Oxen, indole, indole compound. Cytokinin, adenine derivative. Gibberellic acid, terpene. ABA carotenoid and ethylene is gaseous remember please remember these derivative important moving next which hormone is used to induce immediate stomatal closure in leaf one gibel in second gib abscisic acid number third is auxin and fourth is cytokinin quickly answer in the chat box it's very easy just now i told you which hormone is involved in stomatal closure in leaf which hormone will stop the influx of the potassium ions Very good, Chichni. Very good. Yes, it's abscisic acid. ABA, we also call it as stress hormone. Remember. Moving next is match the column 1 with column 2 and choose the correct combination from the option given below. Column 1 has a zeatin b differentiation c auxin d redifferentiation column 2 is tracheary element second is secondary xylem third is cytokinin fourth is indole what do you think what will be the correct option for this question okay Very good, beta. Very good, Chichi. Let's discuss this. Zeatin, cytokinin. The natural cytokinin is zeatin. So, A3. Differentiation is trachery element, beta. B1. Oxen. Indole. Just now I told you, redifferentiation is secondary xylem. D second. D second. C fourth. B one. A three. Correct option is three. Very good, Chijni. 
moving next question number 4 says removal of the shoot tip is very useful technique to boost the production of the tea leaves and this is because option 1 jibelin prevent bolting and are inactivated option 2 auxin prevent the leaf drop at early stages option 3 effect of auxin is removed and growth of lateral bud is enhanced option 4 is jibelin delays senescence of leaf this is a case of apical dominance now you can quickly answer removal of shoot tip is very useful technique to boost the production of tea leaves which hormone is responsible for apical dominance very good chichne zoxin very good dhruvi okay first option says the jibelin prevent bolting and are inactivated the question is asking that shoot tips is used is very useful technique to boost the production of tea leaves so here they are asking about the apical dominance and jibelin does not play any role in apical dominance now option 2 is auxin prevent leaf drop at early stages auxin do but this they are asking with respect to apical dominance so this is not the correct option but the effect of auxin is removed and growth of the lateral bud is enhanced this is the correct option okay and the jibelin delay senescence of this is incorrect you know that auxins are synthesized in the tip and these auxins they play a they are responsible for apical dominance that means when they are present in the tip or in the apical bud they will not allow the growth of the lateral bud but when the tip is removed that is in case of tea leaves we always pluck the tea leaves from the tip so when the tip or the apical bud is remo removed in that case the lateral bud will start growing this is what the third option is saying effect of auxin is removed and the growth of lateral bud is enhanced moving next question number 5 which, which of the following is incorrectly matched they are asking about the incorrectly matched pair ethylene cousin tinitin scoop and miller jibelic acid fw went auxin darwin and darwin what do you think what will be the correct option for this question please remember the name of the scientist and their respective discovery what do you think what will be the correct option for this question fourth beta oxen darwin and darwin remember charles darwin and his son francis darwin that is why it is written darwin and darwin f1 f w went try to recall f w went is also also worked for oxen ruby to me no beta it's okay yes she should need it's three very good ethylene cousin right kitin scoop and miller yes jibelic acid is not fw went fw went worked on oxen oxen david david yes the charles darwin and francis darwin I hope it is clear now. The incorrectly matched pair is three. For jibelic acid, it is. 
Kurosawa. Remember that ba Bacana disease, foolish seedling in rice. Question six is in order to increase the yield of sugar cane crop, which of the following plant growth regulator should be sprayed? I told you when I was teaching a particular hormone. Option one says ethylene, option two says oxygen, option three says gibberellin, and option four says cytokinin. What do you think? What will be the correct option for this question? Name the hormone which is sprayed on the sugar cane crop. to increase the yield of the sugar cane very good teachne the so let me read out the question again in order to increase the yield of sugar cane crop which of the following plant growth regulator should be sprayed it is gibberellic acid it increase the length of the stem Which in turn lead to the increase in yield. Remember this; it's very important. Many times this question is came in need. Moving next, the fruit and leaf drop at early stages. Try to remain early stages can be prevented by the application of a ethylene, b oxygen, c gibberellic acid, and four cytokinin. What do you think? What will be the correct option for this question? So the fruit and leaf drop at early stages can be prevented by the application of oxygen. Remember this point: oxygen prevent the leaf drop of fruit and leaf at early stages but promote their absorption at older stages okay but in early stages it prevent the drop of the fruit and the leaf remember this the hormone is oxygen now it's already one Thank you all for your particip participation. I hope this lecture was informative for you.